All right, so welcome everyone um, to the America's Imagery webinar series, uh, Working with Drones. Uh, this is our last leg of the four-part series. Um, if you missed, um, well, the, at least the last two are, uh, the links are in the chat, advanced imagery and also um, imagery management. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure to post uh, the very first one we had, which was photogrammetry. Uh, into the chat before uh, this meeting is over. Uh, we got a great one for you guys today. Um, Kurt Schroepi, uh, if you don't mind Kurt and Kyle turning on your videos. Um, Kurt, Kurt Schroepi, who's the um, Esri BD manager uh, for imagery, uh, is, is on the call today. Um, there's, there's Kurt saying hi. Um, Kyle Talbot is also on the call, uh, who's a senior solution in engineer from the imagery remote sensing team. Um, sorry, let me... And, um, and, and these two gentlemen will be giving um, their portions of working with drones on this call. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Kurt. Uh, as, as a quick reminder, um, while, while they're presenting, feel free to, to drop any uh, questions uh, into the chat. Uh, you can send them to me directly or you can post uh, to everyone um, in, in the group and we'll try to get to them um, as quickly as possible. Uh, if not, we, we did reserve time in the back end of the presentations. I think we have about 20 minutes today uh, to do Q&A. So we'll, we will be answering those uh, live. So with that said, I'm gonna kick it over to Kurt and, uh, and, and we'll go for about uh, another hour or so and, and then uh, go into the Q&A. Excellent, hey, thanks Milk. And thank you to everybody who's uh, come to these different webinars that we've been holding throughout the, the last two weeks. We really appreciate everybody taking a look at what we have to offer when it comes to imagery inside of ArcGIS. Uh, I was telling Milk before things ticked off that we saved the best for last. And he asked me, is that speaker or content? And uh, so I just decided to let the audience decide what that's gonna be. So, um, but we are looking forward, Kyle and I both looking forward to presenting to you today. I'm going to go ahead and stop my video just because of bandwidth issues and, uh, and then we'll just jump right into the presentation. One of the things that uh, I, uh, you know, love with, uh, with Esri is our notion around the science of where it's so descriptive of what we want to do and, uh, you know, but as an imagery guy, what, what excites me the most is that the science of where, in my opinion, really starts with remote sensing. And it's the ability to send out all types of different uh, sensors, go out and collect information about built environments and natural environments. And with the advent of drones, um, it's even more exciting because now just for a very little amount of money and uh, a, a simple implementation, you can literally carry around a complete mapping system in the trunk of your car and just about go any place, launch a drone, go out and start doing some beautiful 3D mapping. We're just gonna show you some great examples and how that all works for you today. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just a natural extension of the science aware. As Milk was talking, we, we've covered lots of different topics over the past two weeks with the different webinars. And, uh, and this slide is designed to kind of narrow those down into just four broad categories. The first one being able to take all this rich content, manage it inside of a platform, uh, and then, of course, being able to take those raw sources and do mapping. And it's more than just, you know, straight ortho mapping. It's also the 3D mapping, the 3D aspects of it. That's becoming more and more important. So it's this ability to take raw content, do the mapping in multiple dimensions. Um, but now we're taking that even further. We're getting into making observations. And then more important, what Vinay was showing and, uh, and Kyle was showing uh, just on Tuesday, was this ability of the computer to go out and find these spatial patterns within this remote, remotely sensed content and be able to generate information products on the fly using the technology. So that's really what the ArcGIS platform is all about. Uh, one of the things that we kind of haven't covered, we, 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 we did these webinars kind of piecemeal and we covered all these different aspects. So I wanted to bring in this slide just to kind of show you how the complete platform comes together. Uh, and, and this might be scary, it might seem a little complicated, but it, but, it, but it really isn't. 
you know, essentially on the left-hand side there, those are all your sources. Uh, we bring those into the system is they were talking about an imagery management as a mosaic data set. And the mosaic data set does nothing more but manage all the metadata associated with all those pixels and allow the system to go out and find the pixels that it needs to do the ortho rectification, the feature extraction, the change detection, whatever it might need to do. Now, a key part of that is making sure that that imagery is as accurate as a map. It needs to be very geospatially accurate. And Steve Lambert did a tremendous job showing our ortho mapper tools. Um, and those are traditional photogrammetry tools, work with aerial, works with satellite, and, and, and will also work with drone imagery. Um, but we also have our new drone collections. And that's really what today's webinar is about, is, is those, those drone capabilities. And we're going to make some distinctions on why you would consider a drone capability, like drone to map or site scan, over the ortho mapping capability. And we'll talk about that as we go through the presentation. Another aspect of this presentation, we've talked about you know, the, the, the high-end image processing, the imagery analyst, um, but we also want to show you a very simple web client that we put together that makes imagery exploitation much easier for multiple folks. Um, and so it, it, it leverages imagery services. So if you imagine you go out and you collect a whole bunch of imagery, you want to give people access to it. We have a new product called Excalibur that provides that access in that very basic image processing functionality. And Kyle will be showing that as we go through the demonstration. But it's all about transforming raw sources of imagery into useful information. Now in the past, this has been somewhat complex. Uh, you know, remote sensing is not for the faint of heart. Photogrammetry can be a very challenging, highly mathematical thing. Um, but Esri, at Esri, we've been working extremely hard to flatten that complexity curve. We, we're, we're, we really spent a lot of time and effort trying to make these complex things simple. And hopefully you'll see that as we go through the products today. Uh, drone to map, sight scan especially, Excalibur, these have all been set up trying to make these things simple and easy to use. And as I was talking about, you know, Excalibur is this tool um, to do this visualization and what we call exploitation of the imagery. It's primarily is only for visual exploitation, so it doesn't have uh, a lot of analytics behind it. Um, but what it does do is provide this great visualization and ability to go in and, and work with the imagery, um, search and discover, look for it, make your observations, do some basic change comparison, and then actually populate uh, you know, different activities through an operational dashboard, whatever it might be. And Kyle's going to jump in and he'll show you those, those capabilities. It's a nifty little tool. It's, it's very low cost. Um, but it's, it's something that we see that will, will continue to grow for those people and those individuals that don't need a full up ArcGIS Pro to do their image processing work. So let's jump into the main topic right now and, and talk about the drones. And, you know, and I, what I love about drones is they really truly are a new window on the world. Um, they provide this high quality, extremely accurate, easy to use solution that really is surprisingly low cost. I mean, you can go out and get a drone for under a thousand bucks in some processing software, and you can make some extremely powerful 3D maps. Now, the one thing about drones where it's different than aerial or satellite is they're primarily for what I call micro geographies. These are smaller areas of interest. You know, it, it could be a site like this, like a dam, or it could be a building or a structure. We have one customer, they're making 3D maps of their landfill so they can estimate how much capacity they have still in their landfill. So they just fly it once a month and they see how full their landfill is getting. That's a microgeography. But it's solving problems from them looking at smaller areas that they need to know. So it can be a powerful solution. Um, there's three primary product types that can be made from drones. Uh, the first one being those 2D image maps, and those include the orthos and the DSMs. The 3D elevation product, so you can look at it and work with the data in 3D. 
And then these inspection photos, you know, a lot of times you don't necessarily care about the geospatial referencing. You just want to see, uh, you know, if there's any rust damage on this bridge or, you know, does this uh, shingles are missing on this roof or whatever it might be. So people want to do these different inspection type stuff. So that's what our software is designed to do is those three things. Now we talked about, you know, Steve Lambert gave a great presentation on our, on our high end, very rich photogrammetric capabilities. And traditionally, the way that's done is, is using something called aerial triangulation, where it goes in and it just matches all the images up and produces a mathematical model about those images. Traditional photogrammetry, traditional triangulation, um, it really likes to have images that are taken uh, as near vertical as possible. In other words, looking straight down. It, it, that's, that's the way it works best. But what we've done with the drones is come out with a new way of, of doing the triangulation. In other words, creating the, the 3D mathematical models between all your imagery. And that's something called structure from motion. You might have heard of that before. All the drone capabilities that we're going to show you today use structure from motion for its photogrammetric engine. And because it can do that, it can work with imagery that is not taken straight down. It, it can be imagery taken oblique on the side and it matches it all together mathematically. And that's how we're able to get these very rich 3D products. We can generate highly detailed point clouds and 3D meshes from drone imagery. Um, that you can't get with standard traditional aerial photography. So that's kind of how we separate the difference between all our drone work and the photogrammetry that Steve Lambert showed a couple weeks ago. So there's the two differences. And then because of that structure from motion, you can see now the different types of information products that can be generated from uh, these drone packages. You know, Yes, we got the ortho mosaics, we got the DSMs, the digital surface models, we can generate contours. Those are kind of traditional photogrammetry things. But on the 3D side, as I was talking about before, very detailed point clouds, the 3D meshes for site models. We can publish those site models as scene layer packages so we can work with them in, in, in web clients, you know, on the internet. Um, this is very powerful. And then we can also use that same mathematical modeling for the inspect and measure side of things, whether it's volumetric measurements where we can calculate the changes in different volumes. You know, maybe we have a debris pile that we need to estimate on how much it would take to clear. We have those tools and they're available because of the technology of that structure from motion using with the drone imagery. Now these are just some sample products made by our customers that we'd like to show. Extremely detailed, you can see this particular project, you know, 4,800 imagery images that were processed in our drone to map software. And you can see the very detailed information that we were able to derive of this airfield down in, uh, down in a place in Southern Virginia. And they were looking at extending the length of this runway. And so they needed these 3D products to be able to do that kind of uh, uh, work with the, you know, how to figure out how best to expand that runway. This, this sample product, this is actually the Esri campus in Redlands, California. We're adding a new building. We, we, we have uh, more developers coming on board. And uh, so once a week, as, as a rule, they have been going out and using our drone capability, fly over the construction site and maintain this progress of this construction as they're, as they're creating this building. And these are some of the different information products that are generated um, that have been made as part of this collection. You can see the boulders in the center of those images. You know, Jack is a landscape architect, loves to have his boulders, you know, and, and bring natural views inside his building structures. And so, you know, they're smart. They put the boulders in first and then built the building around the boulders. So it's, uh, it's kind of exciting to be able to visualize that with the drone imagery. This is just an example of that high, high resolution 3D mesh that you can get. It's perfect for site planning, facilities management, those types of things. And then, as, you know, before we started and kicked off the presentation, I'll be actually working with FEMA um, over the next few days as we go through this crisis support with Hurricane Laura. This is actually drone imagery that we took over Mexico Beach, Florida from Hurricane Michael a couple years ago. 
but you can just see, you know, how accurate that drone imagery is, and you can see the devastation that occurred in that imagery. And, you know, these drones can get up there immediately and start doing this very precise 3D mapping to just measure the extent of damage that occurs after a disaster area. So there's, there's a number of these different applications that can be used and, and, and more and more as, as different organizations get access to drones and start using them, they're finding more and more applications and it, and it continues to be a huge growth area for us at Esri. Now the one thing that I would like to add in addition to all that great stuff is, you know, um, is imagery folks, we want to make sure that our imagery is, a, is, as thor is as authoritative as possible. And so we need to ensure accuracy. And that's where these um, comprehensive processing reports that are produced by both our drone to map and our site scan solution make it a, are, are made available. So you can actually go in there and you can look at these reports and you can see in detail um, what the accuracy specification is on all your products. And this is in turn allows you to make them authoritative. So when you go out there and share them with your users and you start doing different work or analysis with it, you know that it's geospatially accurate you know, for the types of things that you need to do. So first I'm gonna just jump into drone to map and we're just gonna cover drone to map very quickly. Uh, drone to map is a standalone PC application. It doesn't need any other ArcGIS software. Um, you can, it works with other GIS, ArcGIS software, but you don't need it. It stands alone, it runs in Windows, so it can work on a PC, and it does this, this very high-end you know, drone-type photogrammetry. And here you can see this is the user interface, and it allows you to set up different projects. It's project-driven, and these projects can be 2D projects, 3D projects, or even inspection type work. And you distinguish those because creating 3D output can be a much more consuming than just 2D output. So it allows you to select um, the different types of products that you wanna make. And so it's just a matter of identifying where your photos are from the drone that was taken. You gotta make sure that those photos have, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z values with them. Um, because that gives you an initial orientation around those photos. And then you can just see how this flight line was collected by the drone. And at any point, you can go in and click on any of those, those little blue bubbles there, and you can see the actual photo uh, that makes up that area. And you can see we have good overlap in this particular uh, collection. Um, and so we can generate some halfway decent 3D products by making sure that we have this overlap. And then this is the tool that allows us to bring in ground control points. So you see that X, that marks the spot. And so what I've done is I've told the computer that this photo is marked at that exact location. And that ensures true 3D accuracy of my products. So on, a, on different surveyed endpoints, we've had accuracy down to three centimeters in 3D um, using drone and surveying type techniques. So it's, it's, it's very powerful. And these are just the different options that you have on the, the, the settings on how you want to produce your products. So you have complete uh, uh, ability to kind of set up and how you want the, the processing to work and the level of detail and those types of things. So once you're done, you just kick off the process and hopefully you have a powerful enough PC to run the information. And here you can see the result. So this is the drone imagery, high resolution compared against the backdrop imagery of our base map. And you can see the level of detail and the accuracy that you get when you use those, those products. Now here you'll see that was a DEM and this is a DSM. So what the solution will allow you to do is it, it, it actually tries to figure out the bare earth model that gets created in your 3D products. So it'll look at a DSM or a DTM. And the DTM is the bare earth. The DSM is the digital surface, which includes everything, the bushes, the buildings, and everything. Now this particular flight pattern was done um, to do work in 3D. So you can see the nice thing about drone to map, it allows you to work and visualize in 3D. You can see I did uh, orbital pattern around this particular building, this facility. And I took it from different altitudes and I set my gimbal on my drone to look at different look angles. And so because of that, I got very nice 3D type products. Um, and then, so you can see that facility there. And so 
it just kind of depends on the different information products that you want. If you're happy with uh, orthos, with uh, you know good 3D but not not high end in site modeling, then you can fly this lawnmower pattern going back and forth. Um, but if you want good 3D, it's good to do an orbital pattern. Now, what's really nice here is all this output can be published with just one button, either into ArcGIS Online, or you can open it up inside a Pro. So the solution doesn't need Pro, but it will work with Pro automatically. And so I just click on this, open my project up in Pro, and the system automatically goes out. It opens Pro. Um, the system will point to where your drone project information is, and it will bring all that data right inside of Pro and give you all the different powerful image processing tools that Vinay and Kyle and others have shown you in the different webinars. So, you know, once the imagery is processed through drone to map or through site scan, you bring it in and all your traditional image processing works just fine. So that's what this little diagram is designed to present. You know, just with one click, you got drone to map, you can publish your project into Pro, or you can publish the information products to include the 3D products into your ArcGIS online or your portal. So it works seamlessly as part of a complete solution for the platform. Now I've been talking about drone to map and uh, as I mentioned and I talked about drone to map is a standalone product that works on a Windows PC. But a lot of our users came back and said, we need something more. Uh, you know, there are some cases where I want to operate in a disconnected environment and, and all that's good and I can use drone to map for that. But most of the projects we're doing are very big. We're working in connected environments. Uh, as an organization, I might have 10, 15 drone pilots. Um, and we don't want multiple copies of drone to map. We want a centralized kind of processing environment to do that. So Esri went out and we acquired a corporation, a company by the name of SightScan. And, uh, and they, excuse me, we, we got 3DR and they had a, a software package called SightScan. And we have now acquired SightScan, and we are now starting to integrate that as part of the ArcGIS platform. Now, the thing that makes SightScan different is that it is a true software as a service product. In other words, you don't have any software running on your computer. This is software that all runs in the cloud. You go out, you fly your drone, you collect your imagery, you push your imagery into the cloud, and you start processing. And the thing that is very powerful about this is that it is fully scalable. So it can scale not only across the organization, so you can have multiple uh, drone operators flying drones and, and publishing their, their raw products for processing in a centralized location, but it also scales as far as data storage and processing goes. So the more data that gets thrown for processing, the more CPUs are automatically spun up to do that processing work. So, you know, let's face it, not everybody can go out and get a extremely powerful CP or PC with a powerful CPU and GPUs to do high-end 3D drone processing. And so this is where the cloud comes in. I push the imagery up in the cloud and I can take advantage of the most powerful computers that are available in Amazon or Azure and do my processing of my data. And I don't have to worry about it. I say process, I let it go, and I get an email a few hours later that tells me my work is done. And Kyle's gonna show you how that all works and comes together, it's, it's very powerful. But you can see now how we've, how we've pushed this capability from a standalone single user type operation with drone to map up into site scan for ArcGIS that offers this whole full up cloud processing. And what we actually have done is we have four different bundles of capability now that we offer that, that uh, uh, you know, your distributor within your country can, can make available to you. At the basic level, we have drone to map with an ArcGIS Online capability that you can use. And then we graduate that up with more and more capability depending on the amount of processing that you need. So these are just four different bundles um, that you can acquire 
and each one of them adds more and more capabilities. And, um, you know, it's, so it's a complete range of processing capabilities, depending on your needs as an organization. So before we get going more into the processing, especially around SiteScan, I want to talk about uh, what we call TCPED. That stands for Tasking, Collecting, Processing, Exploitation, and Dissemination. This is a traditional imagery workflow that's been around for a long, long time. You know, it dates back to actually uh, World War II when aerial reconnaissance started up and they would send out a tasking mission and they would go collect photography, do the processing. The analysts would look at it and do exploitation and then the information products would be disseminated. That same workflow still applies today and it still applies with drones. And, but I, I bring it here to your attention because I wanna highlight kind of where things get separated out within the product line itself. So if you look at drone to map, drone to map is only really capable of doing the last three of these, cap of, of these functions on this workflow, the processing, the exploitation, and the dissemination. But when you get site scan, Site scan also includes the tasking and collecting capabilities. And so this allows you to set up mission areas that you wanna collect and then be able to send the drone out to do that collection. And uh, so it's cool. We got an app that allows you to do this. And this app runs on um, an iPad in, in Apple iOS, and it allows you to designate your area of interest and then set up a collection pattern. And the collection pattern can vary on the type of information product you want to collect. And so let's just jump into a quick little demo of this product. And so you can see how, uh, how uh, this, uh, this collection product works. So this is, this is what we call site scan field. And you can go in and designate your project. And then you can look at different ways of flying. So you might want to just do an area survey back and forth. Or you might want to do a crosshatch pattern like this. So with that crosshatch pattern, you get imagery from both front and side. You get imagery looking straight down, but also front and back and side to side. And so this is a good way of doing orthos, but also getting good 3D information. Now you can see as you adjust the different parameters, it automatically will tell you it's only going to take one battery. It's going to take 18 minutes. You know, if you if you go up in altitude, then you don't need as many flight lines, but you lose the resolution. Uh, but the system's fully dynamic, so you can adjust those and collect how you want it to collect. And so once you get your area of interest, you just say, go ahead, collect this area. And once you're ready to go, you just hit the button and say, go out and fly it, drone. And the drone becomes a robot, and it goes and does what it needs to do. Another collection pattern that it can do is a 3D collection pattern. And we can go in, and you can see this allows you to set up uh, multiple altitudes to collect around a particular area. So there's this very high bridge in California and we want to do inspections and you can see that we've set up an orbital pattern around this bridge so we can look at it from uh, multiple different look angles. And uh, like I said, once we're, once we're ready to go, the system goes through a, a check of your drone. And because I recorded this inside, uh, the pre-flight the pre check failed. Um, but that's the power of it. It will actually uh, go in and do that pre-flight and make sure everything's ready to go. Um, and if you are ready to go and the system and the drone is ready, you just hit that button, say take off, and you let the robot be the robot and it goes out and it collects the information exactly how you want to collect it. So it's a very powerful flight planning, flight management application. So that's the tasking and collection. Uh, what I'm going to do now is turn the presentation over to Kyle and he's going to show you now how SiteScan will do that processing, exploitation, and dissemination. So, Kyle, it's all yours. All right, Kurt. And I will turn the question answering over to you. <laughs> all right. So let's jump into SiteScan here. Uh, Kurt did a great job showing an introduction to the to the flight planning application. Great for tasking and collection. Um, I'm going to show you this, uh, the second part of site scan, what we call the site scan manager, which you'll see here is completely accessible uh, in a browser. Um, 
the site scan app is is very helpful for for that first part of the TCPED workflow. Um, however, if you are able to completely run um, a full um, drone processing workflow in in the uh, in the browser here in the site scan manager, uh, especially if uh, somebody else is doing the tasking collection of your drone images and, and you're just simply looking to do the processing on your own. So this is a this is our home page of our site scan organization. An organization um, is you know, very similar to ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Enterprise with many different users and members. That's that's how SiteScan works as well. Um, members and licenses will be added uh, to your organization. And so you can uh, collaborate with team members on your various projects in, in this org. You can add certain members to certain projects, some people have full access to, to all projects. It's based on your permission levels. Again, very similar to um, uh, user types, permission levels at ArcGIS Online and, uh, and Enterprise. So this is where you can do the management of that, management of the different users. Here's where you can access projects that have already been, that have already been run, or you can access new pro or you can create new projects as well. I'll walk you through the process really quick of starting a new project. So we'll, so that I remember what this is for. So we give it, we can give it a project name, give it the unit settings, et cetera. Move next. Then we can pick an area that we want to uh, focus on. We can type in, uh, Type in an address and it'll essentially search for it for you. So what this does at the beginning is it just gives you a, a starting point just where, um, you know, your, your imagery can focus on. And the reason we do that is because as you'll see multiple, a project can contain multiple flights and these can be for, um, you know, multiple flies over the same area. For example, if you're doing, like what we showed with um, with building uh, management during construction, um, you're doing multiple flights. You can compare those images over time. If you're if you're doing um, multiple flights over uh, for for certain purposes over a similar area, then then it's it's nice to be able to organize them all into a single project. And then the last step, you can invite members of the organization right off the bat into your project. You can skip that step. And then here's your project. Here's your flights. And we'll, again, we'll show you this. Um, we'll show you this a completed project. You can add your flights here. We'll add one of those. You can add ground control points to increase the accuracy of your project, of your, of your flights members here output settings this is what I'll, I'll start with first you can start these outputs you can you can change the default default output settings of your different projects um, so that when because a lot of what site scan does is automatically run and process and so if you change if you were to change the uh, if you, if you change by changing the output settings here, um, then you don't have to do any reprocessing later on if if your um, if your desired outputs are different. So we can set these different again depending on what you know. We can change the size of our point cloud. We can change the resolution of our ortho mosaics. Um, identify which mesh engine we want to use. Etc. We can add all of that. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a new flight. This is really easy. All you have to do is add, give it a name, give it a date. Oops. We'll do today the 27th. And then you start uploading photos. Um, again, I'll just find some photos from a 
prior project here. You can go ahead and select all of the images. And then the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to start to dedupe. It's just going to check and make sure there aren't any duplicate images in the batch. And then it'll start to upload. Uh, upload times are based on um, the speed of your internet that you're working with. Um, so once the, and then once the images are uploaded, you can check, you can make this, you can check this box that will say automatically process when the upload completes. That's why it's important to set your output settings at the beginning of your project because it's going to process all of this information uh, based off of based off of the the settings that you've identified in your project. So we can do that. You do need to leave this window open while um, while the while the images are uploading, but that doesn't mean you can't open another browser window of SiteScan and, and continue working in in other places. And the beauty of SiteScan is it just does it on its own, right? So um, what we'll do, actually, go to our project list, so you can see. We're going to go to uh, one project. This is our this is the bridge that Kurt showed the. Uh, the video of the flight planning uh, application. So this is the output. The nice thing about working with it from, working with SiteScan from the uh, flight planning app is that um, it will just, once once you have the collect completed, the flight completed, it will, you send the photos up to the cloud from there and they and they just immediately start processing. You don't even have to go you don't even have to go through this step using the flight planning app. So we'll open up. So you can see the flights, the different flight plans. Um, again, the output settings, members of the projects, et cetera. We'll just jump into one of the one of the finalized flights. And so you can see now the seamless ortho mosaic is very high quality much higher quality than the base map behind it. You do get to see the individual photos as well that were taken, um, uploaded into the project, um, all of which are downloadable, exportable on their own. You're not only creating ortho mosaics, but generated from the point cloud, which I'll show you in a minute, you can also uh, create uh, different elevation data. And so that includes things like contour lines, elevation models, um, cut fills, and tail shades. So lots of accuracy there. Um, you're, again, you also generate a point cloud using that structure from motion algorithm that Kurt mentioned earlier in the webinar. Um, it's able to generate all of these different points. Um, this is great for visualization. However, uh, SiteScan also gives you some tools for uh, easy analysis. You can use an elevation profile tool. Um, you know, we're working in a canyon here, so I can drop a point move that point, move my line up to the top of the hill here, and it gives me that elevation profile that I can use. Another nice tool is the photo inspect tool. So what this does is it'll let me select a point anywhere here in, in the point cloud. And after I select a point, all of the corresponding images where that point falls, the individual images are given to me in the side pane here, and I can use those for, for manual inspections. So very handy tool. And then finally, overlaying the imagery over the point cloud, we're able to generate a 3D model, a mesh that we can use for, for visualization of the area.
And this can be used for, for various modeling purposes. Pretty high resolution of this bridge. Um, I did want to show you another project. This is one that was completed fairly recently. Um, just another use case. This is a project that was uh, taken in Michigan. Uh, a few months ago in Michigan, uh, there was a dam burst. And the dam burst caused a lot of flooding over this area. Um, lots of damage to homes. Our, the FEMA agency in the US, uh, Flood Emergency Management Agency, uh, had to do a lot of damage assessment in this area. And so, Again, when you turn off and on the ortho mosaic, you can see quite a bit of damage has occurred after, after this flood. The easiest way to see that is through our timeline. So let's see. So the timeline provides a swipe tool, allows you to compare what the dam looked like before, as well as all of the, all of the damage that's occurred in this area. And you can just see going down on the roads is what people are dealing with. Now, I wanna to go to the mesh here really quickly, show the 3D mesh of this area. Uh, one of the things that FEMA will do as part of uh, disaster relief management, et cetera, for, um, for disasters like this is debris from, from all the damaged homes, vehicles, uh, structures, et cetera. Debris piles will be gathered up and uh, based off of estimations of the amount of debris in these piles will help to determine uh, what um, what uh, insurance companies should help pay for uh, for disaster claims, et cetera. Um, and so, in this 3D image, you can see a lot of the uh, a lot of the debris piles that have been collected here. Um, so you can visualize that. Um, if we go back into 2D though, um, again, because SiteScan processed all of this elevation data, the different elevation models here, um, what we're able to do, and you can see it, you can see some of the outlines of some of these debris piles actually, um, the higher volume content, what we can actually do is we can actually use a volume measurement tool here in SiteScan uh, to be able to um, visualize, visualize and get the, and get better measurements off of the volume contents. And SiteScan lets you see the cut fills of that in 3D. So, very helpful tools for, for these types of workflows right here in, uh, right here inside scan. So finally, what I wanna do, um, I did get a question addressed to me privately about what we're doing um, as far as um, sharing these outputs, correct? So you have a couple different ways of doing that. One, you can export your data uh, locally. You can download all of the generated products, the ortho mosaics, the DEMs, the DTMs, contours, point clouds, meshes, the PDF of your processing report even, and the individual photos. All of that is downloadable. However, what we're also doing is we're connecting this to ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. Um, so for now, what we're able to do is we're able to, um, connect to ArcGIS Online, and we can share uh, all of this, all of these layers as, as tiles. Um, 
or your meshes as scene layers. You're able to do the same thing with ArcGIS Enterprise as well. You can connect a single enterprise deployment. Um, you can connect a single enterprise deployment to uh, to your site scan org and publish uh, publish information there. Um, I did get a question about uh, publishing them as image services as opposed to tile layers. That is forthcoming. That, that is on the roadmap. Um, we, we actually just barely, as of a couple months ago, were able to integrate um, the enterprise sharing uh, into SiteScan. Um, so tile layers came first. Next up is image services. So, so that's a, that is a brief, introduction to site scan uh, pretty straightforward workflows with powerful cloud processing and again it's very nice to be able to just um, you know once you know once these photos are uploaded um, into your uh, into your uh, projects into your flights you can even close the browser and let SiteScan run on its own, and it just sends you an email when it's when it's completed. Um, that's that's the power of the cloud. Um, elastic processing, much much more streamlined. So, uh, with that, I'm going to take a break from the drone processing software, and I'm going to move into. Um, the product that Kurt brought up at the very beginning, ArcGIS Excalibur, and an introduction to that and how, how you can be used to manage your imagery. So ArcGIS Excalibur web, is a web-based um, image client used for working with imagery in your organization. You can access it from your portal homepage. It is a it is software that is directly tied to an uh, ArcGIS Enterprise and image server deployment of 10.7 or higher. And what it lets you do is it lets you work with your, your image services, um, your image services in your organization. So, you know, kind of alluding to what I'd gone over earlier, um, you know, there isn't a direct easy button quite yet to get your imagery um, as image services from SiteScan. It is, a, it is on the roadmap, it is coming. Um, and there are other ways where you can still uh, generate image services um, from your, from, from your, uh, from your site scan products for the time being. It just involves a couple of extra steps right now um, by downloading it and then uploading it again through, through ArcGIS Pro. Um, so this is all of the imagery within our organization. Again, I'm just gonna do a quick introduction to this, um, but you can connect with different imagery layers. You have cataloging capabilities where um, these, uh, these image services that contain multiple different images using the mosaic data set functionality allows you to go through and search um, search different images within your collection. Um, and so you can do that by, um, by adjusting your search settings, um, you know, by drawing areas of interest, you have filters such as date ranges, um, cloud cover filters, et cetera. This is all based off of the metadata within the imagery that you get. So uh, sometimes, uh, depending on the drone that you're flying and, and, the, and the camera, they may not have all of this information here that you can use um, for, search, for, for search and discovery. Um, however, you can always um, draw by area of interest and you can always um, view the metadata of each individual image to ensure that it's what you want to work with. Um, and you can always preview what the raw image looks like as well. So this is satellite imagery that we have over San Francisco. Different from drones, but um, but again, uh, Excalibur will let you manage and work with all of the image services uh, within your within your organization. So we'll show you an example of that. 
Let's see. Okay. So this is an example of, uh, of drone imagery uh, that was taken, a drone collection. Uh, so you can see all of the individual images. We can work with them here. Um, in Excalibur, we can work with the whole uh, seam of images as well. Uh, and you can see, again, Excalibur is a good tool for um, easily visualizing this imagery uh, within a browser. And then again, you have all of the tools that you need to, um, to do some basic exploitation in this markups, measurement tools, um, image display and enhancements, et cetera. Um, and, and Excalibur will take in all types of imagery, not just your standard multispectral, uh, RGB, panchromatic, uh, panchromatic images, but they will also ingest other types of rasters. This is the this is the DEM that was generated from that dr same drone collect. Uh, we intake all types of data types, thermal imagery, uh, radar. Um, we're able to we're able to ingest it all, and, and work with it in Pro. Um, you can work with it ad hoc, as I've shown. You're also able to create imagery projects. This is where I can go ahead and pre-select all of the different images and uh, assign projects to uh, individuals in my organization and, um, and give them the specific tools that they need to, um, the specific tools that they need to access, um, to access this information. And I don't know why this isn't working. I apologize, this worked yesterday. All right, well, I think I'm going to press on then. Um, so that's an introduction to Excalibur. Um, there's one more thing that I wanted to show. Uh, this is our, um, you know, going back to working with drones, we sh we've shown, we've talked a lot about, um, we've talked a lot about working with uh, the still imagery that drones were able to capture. We did want to introduce uh, one more um, tool that we have for working with uh, what you can capture with drones. And this is what we refer to as full motion video, uh, also, known as motion imagery. Um, this is a capability that comes with the image analyst extension in ArcGIS Pro. Um, this is something that has become very popular. Uh, it's primarily been designed for our defense and intelligence community for what they're doing with, uh, with motion imagery. Um, it has become a, a topic of demand or, or a, a demanded something in high demand from our public safety community. They want to be able to um, work with images from drones for, for public safety purposes. Um, right now, this image, the motion imagery does require um, a, a, a data standard called MISB, which essentially requires um, specific metadata to be embedded directly within the video. Um, and so what that does, what that metadata does is it allows you to project the field of view onto your maps and 3D scenes as well as uh, see what the, the line of sight as well as the position of the sensor is uh, as it flies, as the video plays. And so what this does is it allows you to uh, transfer some of the information that you're getting from the video uh, directly into your map and scene and vice versa. 
Im information that you have in your GIS can also be overlaid onto the video. So for example, uh, as this video follows a car here, uh, what we can do is we can drop points on the car directly in the video that kind of that will kind of indicate breadcrumbs. Um, show where the car has been, follow its path. And as you can see that as I'm dropping these points in the video, they're appearing um, in the map as best as the uh, metadata of the video allows. One other thing that we can do is we can take a single frame from the video and with a single click, with a single click, we can save that video frame as a single image and it will automatically uh, ortho rectify that image onto the map. So there are various different tools that you can use um, with FMV in the video player, you know, things like a north arrow to show the direction of the video, um, measurement tools as well. Um, so I can measure the distance of the car. Etc. So, okay, there we go. So we can measure the distance of the car, and then there are various different tools for exporting these uh, these different frames from the images, uh, these frames from the video into different formats, such as save file folders. You can export them into PowerPoints. Um, you can visualize the metadata of, of these videos as well. So that's, uh, that is an introduction to um, some of the things that you can do with, uh, with your drones. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Kurt to finish off. Okay, thanks Kyle, actually, uh... I'm going to go ahead and bring milk back in as well. I think that's what we had to show for today. And, uh, you know, now it's a good time. If anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the chat box and we'll answer them as good as we can. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kurt. Uh, those presentations were fantastic. And have you seen, Kurt, uh, we've been... Uh, uh, pretty active on the on the chat, so um, uh, we'll we'll get to those in, in just a second. Um, we had quite a few participants uh, join this this very last session. Um, I would like to ask uh, if you've done it for previous sessions. Um, I, I kind of take these session by session, but your feedback is is very much important. If you've enjoyed um, these sessions that we've been having. Um, and we would like more, whether imagery or, or something else, uh, please, uh, uh, again, uh, class participation, pull out your phones, uh, scan this QR code, and, and let us know uh, what you thought of this session um, and if you would like to be contacted or need additional support. All right, now that that little infomercial is, is out of the way, uh, now let's talk some uh, different imagery questions. So I'm going gonna, gonna to pull up the chat here, Kurt. I know there was several. Uh, some some that we missed, some that were asked in Spanish, and perhaps more you looked over. Yeah, um, I can't the one in Spanish. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's maybe slapped that one into Google Translate. Um, looks like it has to deal with uh, different band combinations and uh, shortwave infrared. Yes. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm getting out of it. Uh, does it require for you to adjust the camera angle? It's, so, it's that last portion. 
Well, you know, it, it, when it comes to working with multiple bands, it really depends on the camera itself. Um, the more modern cameras, the multiple bands will line up, you know, perfectly. So you don't have to adjust those. Um, both a uh, site scan and drone to map can, can bring in imagery.